Now, from Atlanta News First Plus, this is Sports Tonight. Welcome to Sports Tonight here on a... Uh, this thing's Wednesday, isn't it? It is Wednesday. <laughs> Going back so fast. I'm sports... <laughs> I'm sports director Scott. I'm not sports director. She's sports director Bailey Burmaster. I'm sports producer Scott Pennyman. Bailey, how's it going today? It's going. There's a lot going on in the sports world, isn't there? It's a little bit. It's a little bit here. First, I guess the appropriate thing to start with here is Falcons today. They brought out, well, I guess not all their assistant coaches. They'll be doing that the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. But they brought out new offensive coordinator uh, Zach Robinson Mm -hmm. and – it's crazy. I remember him playing quarterback at Oklahoma State. I remember him playing quarterback at Oklahoma State because I'm an Oklahoma State That's right. fan. So That's right. Um, he was there, oh. It was a while ago. Oh, five to oh, eight. Okay. Some, in that vicinity. Um, it's funny because Raheem Morris actually <laughs> made a jab about it because he was the defensive coordinator at Kansas State in 2006, and they beat Oklahoma State that year. Um, so they beat Zach Robinson, essentially, who's now his OC. And here they are in Atlanta. Um, also introduced defensive coordinator Jimmy Lake. Jimmy Lake. Um, I'll give my first impressions on – we'll start with Jimmy Lake, and then we'll go to Zach Robinson, and we'll go from there. Um, How about Jimmy? I thought Jimmy was really – I liked his energy. I thought um, he had – a very strong presence and I didn't really like the answer of we're going to, you know, his philosophy on defense, fast, physical and free. Wasn't crazy yep. about that. Cause that's pretty much coach speak in this uh, day and era. What was he going to say though? You know? Yeah. What was he really going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what was your impression? Uh, yeah. I mean, typical press conference. I've probably seen 800, uh, in my time, probably seen about 800 coaches, uh, hired uh in my day so yeah i mean it's, it's just one of those things where um you know coach speak like you said and just he's basically there to it, it's like a pep rally right that's mm-hmm. what we always talk about when the coach is in there it's like a pep rally mm-hmm. so um i thought he came across as very direct jimmy did um i thought he came across as um he seems focused and he knows what kind of defense he wants mm-hmm. um very experienced coach, right? I mean, he spent years in college football and spent time with the Rams. Look, the way I see it, anything that came in under Sean McVay seems to turn to gold. So he spent a year with the Rams. You got, I, I have full confidence that he knows what he's doing. He seems like um, the kind of coach that's kind of in lockstep with what Raheem Morris wants. So look, with all these coaches, when coaches come in, we don't really know what to expect, right? I mean, we don't know what's going to The Falcons' defense wasn't bad, so he no. has some things to work with. They're ranked 11th overall this past year. So it's a good defense. What you're looking for him is to be innovative enough to take it to that next level, mm-hmm. right? So, And if he can do that, then it's fine by me. Well, and I think what I liked is he said that he you know, watched a lot of Falcons' film to see what they were working with, and he texted Raheem and said, we've got some pieces to work with here, and I, I think they certainly do. He also spoke on Jerry Gray and retaining him and um, how well-respected he is around the league, and you know, he said when he was watching the DBs, he's like, these guys are coached up. Like, yeah. they're coached up, um, which is a total testament to Jerry Gray, and I was very vocal on this show about um, him being a crucial part to that defense and trying to keep him around, so I'm happy that uh, they thought that, too, when they saw the film. Um, you know, Zach Robinson, I feel like, didn't say a whole lot today, and everyone was really wanting to see what he was all about because of what he can do for this Falcons offense. I'm sure he has a lot going up in the noggin as far as how he wants this offense to look, who he wants at quarterback. But, you know, he did mention that it was going to be all ha- like all options on, on the table when it comes to the quarterback position. Uh, he wanted some guy hmm. that is the utmost biggest competitor on the team. Um, he mentioned he wants them to be able to sling it. He talked about his relationship with Stafford because he played behind Stafford in Detroit for a bit. They're really yeah. good friends. Um, and then went on to coach him and just everything he learned from him in a sense of, you know, Matt was so prepared and so in tune that, like, he it would push him. Um, and, you know, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how that – transition from a Matt Stafford like hypothetical here in no way shape or form do I think the Falcons will roll with Desmond Ritter but going from working with Matt Stafford to Desmond Ritter 
you know how frustrating that has to be? <laughs> hey, the much- They're just different caliber quarterbacks to just, you know, I don't think Ritter's as bad as they get, um, but he's not nearly close to Matt Stafford. Well, I don't know if you noticed in the press conference. I know I did. It was mm-hmm. one of the things that – it was one of the biggest takeaways I had from it is okay. when, when Robinson got the question about Desmond Ritter from someone who was there – he quickly, uh, he, 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 he quickly swept that one under the rug when he was mm-hmm. talking about Desmond Ritter. He's like, well, look, I mean, I, I really haven't evaluated anything. We'll look at the film, and we'll just see how we want to move forward there. He, he didn't seem like a guy who thought Desmond Ritter was going to be his quarterback. So to, to, be, so to be fair on a lot of fronts here, um, questions were supposed to be done at that point because yeah. I feel like context matters. <laughs> Uh, Zach had already kind of moved from the podium, yeah, and then it was asked, and he stayed and answered. He did. And honestly, I thought he answered it great, given the circumstance yeah. of they're probably not rolling with Desmond Ritter, right. and they probably don't want Desmond Ritter. That's not his guy. It's nothing against Desmond Ritter. He didn't perform the way he needed to. It is what it is. Um, but nonetheless, you know, there's there's some things that at play of who who will they go get what is i actually talked to ellie yesterday scott and the theory mm-hmm. for me is that i think they're going to go after justin fields after yeah. hearing raheem morris after um hearing uh how they're talking about the offense and quarterback they want someone who has played in the nfl and who is talented and i think they believe that's justin fields now can they get what they want in return the bears from you know a draft capital and personnel yeah. standpoint i don't know but well, well that's the question i mean that's been like the worst kept secret the whole season right mm-hmm. is is pretty much uh it's been talked about from late in the season and it's going to be talked about until it actually happens if it actually happens which is it seems like justin fields is a perfect fit for what the falcons are what they need and what they're looking for moving forward like mm-hmm. you just said so yeah i mean i, I think that'll be an option that's on the table it, look when it comes to quarterbacks in the NFL, there aren't very many options. That's why they get paid like they get paid, right? Mm-hmm. Because there aren't but so many of them that people feel good about. So mm-hmm. I think um, when you look at their draft position, they're probably not going to get one of the top three guys that are available in the draft. So if you're not in a position to get one of the top three guys in this draft, then, yeah, you have to figure out what other options you have at quarterback. And yep. it seems like Justin Fields is probably one of the best options available, right? Yep. I'm, I'm, so. I'm, at this point, I think so. Maybe they see something in um, they see something in Fields that maybe the Bears haven't been able to capitalize on and they have different coaches and they can coach him up better than what the Bears have been giving. So we'll see. So let's move on to something here. I, I found just, I mean, I'm not going to say it almost knocked me out of my chair, but Okay, let's hear it. So the 49ers today got rid of defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes. Uh, we all saw what happened in the Super Bowl where the 49ers lost to the the, the Chiefs in overtime. Uh, they got Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, and so they decide to move on. For me, that was pretty unexpected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but... I think you know as much as I do in the NFL. Someone has to be the fall guy. And I was tempted to ask um, the special teams coordinator for the Falcons today because he was talking about how hard it is to get a job, how hard it is to keep a job in this league. And I would be curious to hear coaches speak on, do they feel like there's a lot more turnover now? Do they feel like the leash has been shortened for all coaches? Because it feels like not a lot of people get enough time to uh, figure things out. No, I mean, and that's a byproduct of a lot of different things, right? That's a byproduct of fans becoming more impatient uh, with their team's losses. So when fans become impatient, owners react, they become impatient. And when owners are impatient, people get fired. So Mm -hmm. I understand that part of it. Um, But here's what's disturbing about this to me. Do you know anyone who watched the Super Bowl on Sunday and came away from that game thinking, wow, the 49ers defense is it's terrible. They got to do something about that. Of all the things that you heard of after Sunday's loss for the 49ers, I heard that. I didn't hear that at all. No. And at the end of the day, you're going against Patrick Mahomes. Have you seen that crazy stat that's making its round on Twitter? Which, about, which um, Gosh, I can't remember the exact circumstances, so bear with me. But it's in fourth quarters when trailing by seven or more points. And I'm, I, I believe this is correct, but mm-hmm. don't take my word for it if it's not. I got you. Uh, by trailing by seven or more points in the final 
minute or two minutes, it's one of the two, of the game where it's like crucial drives that could change the trajectory of the game. Uh, one of the best is obviously Tom Brady, who was like three of seven or four of seven in those situations. Patrick Mahomes was seven for seven in those situations. Right. So, I mean, is there any shame in losing to Patrick Mahomes? There's no shame in it because no. he's one of the great quarterbacks to ever play already, and he's only about six seasons in. So, to me, that's what came across as being so crazy because, mm -hmm. when, again, when you, when you came away from the Super Bowl, I thought the 49ers defense played pretty well the first three quarters of the game. I mean, mm -hmm. they kept the team in the game. I don't think they were outstanding, but they kept the team in the game, and it was a good defensive battle early in that game. Mm -hmm. So... For me, for them to walk away from this game and saying the thing that we need to fix is our defense, I would love to know whose decision that was, whether it's John Lynch or Kyle Shanahan well, or, or whatever, because to me it made absolutely no sense. You have to keep in mind, too, we don't know everything that goes on behind closed doors. Who knows if it was a clash of personalities or just neither of them felt like they were gelling well. There's so many things and so many instances where you're in the run of play. I just a lot of times we have a habit when dissecting the NFL of seeing things at face value and not really understanding what could be happening behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, and I have a feeling this might be one of those just because it is kind of like a, huh, you know? Well, I'll be interested to see who they move on to because mm -hmm. I, I thought he did a pretty solid job. The 49ers defense was pretty solid. I know early in the season they had some issues and they were kind of going back and forth about things and mm -hmm. they wanted Steve Wilk to, to do some things differently because I think they were used to having D'Amico Ryans last mm -hmm. year, who was outstanding as a coordinator, and he's been a pretty good head coach too, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so I look, I get it from that standpoint. If you feel like that there were some things there that wouldn't have fit, okay, it's whatever, but I just feel like of all it, – it, it comes across as if – it really gives as if you're calling him the scapegoat. Mm -hmm. And Kyle Shanahan, look – He's been through this before, right? I mean, here's a man who's a, is a head coach who blew a lead in the last Super Bowl against the Chiefs, a late lead, mm -hmm. just did it again. It just seems like he's trying to deflect that off himself mm -hmm. and basically say this, this is Steve's fault. You know, yeah. to me, I don't know. I get bad vibes from it, but <laughs> whatever. It's the NFL, and it, I've come to expect that sort of thing. Right. So, so one of the things, the NBA trade deadline was last Thursday, and – Something that I guess was kept really quiet was the Golden State Warriors, who for years had the great rivalry against LeBron James in the finals and everything when he was in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. I, I covered all four of those NBA finals. Mm -hmm. Apparently the Warriors made a play to try to acquire LeBron James in the last 24 hours of the NBA trade deadline. Can you imagine what that would have been like? I would have hated it. <laughs> I would have hated it. I don't know why. I don't have any reason to. I just think at the end of the day, LeBron going to the Warriors is like just joining the villain ultimately. Um, I mean, don't you feel like that after everything? Like you would hate it too, no? I wouldn't hate it. I mean, I think it'd be kind of cool at the end of their careers to see where Steph is at right now. Look, from, a, from just an, a pure entertainment standpoint, mm -hmm. I think it would have been awesome. When you think about where LeBron James is now at his, at his age, where Steph is at his age, they're, they're playing, both playing great uh, basketball at mm -hmm. advanced ages. So to put those guys together with what Golden State has, I don't even know if that would have been a championship team, honestly, with where mm -hmm. they're at right now. But from an entertainment standpoint, I think it would have been a really cool thing to see. But apparently LeBron shot it down. Apparently when they talked to him, and LeBron's at the point in his career where he's, a, he's accomplished enough to where they'll give him veto right for things like that. Apparently yeah. he shot it down. He said, nah, I'd rather stay here in L.A. But I think a lot of that is due to the fact that LeBron James going to L.A. was more than just about basketball. It was about his family wanting to mm -hmm. live in L.A. They wanted to be in L.A. His kids wanted to be there. So it's not a surprise that he shot it down because at the end of the day, him going to L.A. wasn't 100% about basketball anyway. Well, no, I mean, I, he's not quiet about the fact that he's near the end of his career. For sure. Like, he is near the end, which is going to be crazy the day he actually retires, honestly. It's going to be insane. For sure. Um, but he's been vocal that he's at the end. Yeah. He would like to play one year with Bronny once he gets to the NBA yep. and then call to wraps. Quite frankly, I think he has at least three more years in him. Like he, I could see him playing for three more years. His body, he seems That's physically strong enough. It, it, it is. I don't know if he will, but I could see yeah. it. If he wills himself to, he could. Um, but 
I think you're totally right in the aspect of this was a family decision. This exactly. was a lifestyle decision. He likes being in L.A. It's where the roots are. It's sure. where they probably feel safe and comfortable at this point. Why would you make a move to just – I mean, even I, I get he probably wants to win championships, but also – what else do you have left to prove at this exactly. point? Yeah, it, I think it's all about playing with Ronnie at this point. Mm -hmm. Once he does that, I think he'll probably step aside. Mm -hmm. So we got some GSU football, right? We do. Spring football is back. Georgia State getting things rolling. Uh, Sean Elliott seemed fired up about it. Let's go to his presser uh, as they get ready for 2024. I like Sean. Let's go. Let's hear from him. Spring 2020. 20, 20, 20. Well, I guess it's not spring, is it? It's, uh, it's winter 2024 which is fantastic, a little cool starting off today, but you know, it's always, always good if you're a player or a coach, it's always good to be back on the playing field. That's, that's the, the surface that you want to be on all the time. You know, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, the weight room and the off season conditioning and, and things of that nature are surely important, but uh, ultimately, you know, it's what, what you do on that, that playing surface. So uh, good energy, you know, a lot, a lot of mistakes, of course, out there, a lot of new faces on that, that sideline out there on that field, which is good. It makes it, uh, makes it fun to coach new players because uh, they're also eager to listen to you and, and learn what you have to say. Um, you know, it, it's a typical first day of spring, you know, trying to find positional players for uh, a lot of different spots, uh, you know, secondary, quarterback, running back. I mean, there, there's offensive line. I mean, every, every positional battle is is one to watch in the spring you never know who's going to emerge um ultimately it comes down to the to the playmakers i mean at every position i told those guys out there you know it's, it's not about wanting to play the game of football i think we all want to play the game of football everybody on that team wants to be uh the the starter but it, it's it's a need for them you know when it becomes a need it becomes truly important it, it's something different than than wearing the jersey and going through the motions um and that's what we got to find. And from the first day, just, just taking a look at our first day, uh, I would say we have some guys that came in here with a, with a look of need in their, in their mind. And, and that's good. That's good. Now we got to develop that and uh, see where it takes us from there. Um, the early start, you beat the two to three weeks ahead of most folks. Yeah. What, what, what does that do for you? I think on the back end, it gives us a chance to get our team bigger and stronger uh, without really a break because, you know, in this day and age, there's not really a break. Typically, when you go a little bit later, you have that that exam break and that month of May break, and, and, and we still have those to a certain degree, but it just gives us a little bit more time in the weight room, in the conditioning room, in the meeting time in this day and age of player-led practices and, and, and things that you can do now. Uh, I think it's just more beneficial to get back on the field and, and go with it. Um, it benefited us uh, quite well a year ago, and I think it will do the same thing. You know, and, and also, um, you know, if you were to happen to have an injury, it gives you a little bit more time to have uh, some rehab, and, and that always helps. A lot of people got a chance to step into starting roles for the bowl game. How much does that help this time around? It, 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 honestly, uh, that was one of the more incredible experiences I've had because I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, it's about players. When you go to a bowl game in, in this day and age, it's about the teams that want to be there. And so when we had so many new faces step into those new roles, uh, to new positions, and they're the guy, and just, God, three weeks earlier, they, they weren't the guy. It, it I don't know, it, it sparked. I mean, it just put a spark in everybody. It, Honestly, our last practice, the Friday before the bowl game, was the best practice we had all year. And so those new players now leading into the spring it just still has that spark because they, they got a taste of it. And when you get a taste of it, it's hard to get the taste out of your mouth. It, you, just, you just want more and more and more. And that's, that's the way those new guys looked. They came out here, and it was almost like they had played the entire year. You know, they were like, hey, I'm ready to go. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Uh, so that's, all, that's, that's really what helped us. I mean, it's uh, – it was great to see how it finished because they went out and played so well with great effort, and uh, it kind of shows you what the future's, uh, you know, what lies ahead for us. Yeah, yeah. We know one thing you got to do is a quarterback, so that's the elephant in the room. Talk about um, that competition, and we know about one that came from about six blocks away. Yeah, you know, uh, it, to to speak on it on day one would, be, I mean, I don't know. I, I saw through three or four throws they were throwing over there about took out some coaches on the sideline i said hey man we can't be killing our coaches y'all throwing it i said we got to keep it on the playing surface and i always joke with them about that but ultimately 
we all know you got to have a quarterback to win. We all know you got to have a good quarterback to be a really good football team. Um, you can have all the others, but you've got to have that position. You, you've got to have that guy. That's what we're searching for. Do I think we have the guy on our roster? Certainly. Uh, when that guy emerges, you, everybody's going to know it. But I think we do have the, the talent on our roster for that guy to be the leader of our football team and to be a really, really good quarterback. You know, it takes time. It takes time. That's like I wouldn't go out there and ask them to do it today. Uh, none of them. Because, like I said, it's day one of spring practice or winter practice, whatever you want to call it. But I do think we have the ability to be really good in that room. You had Diesel wanted to kind of fit the mold of what we've seen recently with Granger and Ellington yeah. or someone who might be a little bit of a different different style. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty stubborn, hard-headed guy, so uh, I, I like doing the things I like to do. And uh, maybe it's not their, their forte right now, but they'll have it in their repertoire here <laughs> soon. Uh, you know, and it's just – it's. They all have the ability to be great at doing both the throwing and the running ability. Um, it's just some have never been asked to do it. So I don't know if I'm a quarterback, I would always know I'd want the ball in my hand, whether I'm throwing it or running. So it's just me. It seems to resolve things with your running back situation with the bowl game. Uh, you wonder because you had one person that was doing so much last season, but yeah. you had someone that, like you said, stepped in. Yeah, you take a guy like Freddie Brock that um, – like I said, he had had a huge, huge game in the bowl game. You know, he had I think going in he had six carries in all of last season, and and we did have a pretty good back that was ahead of him. Um, that that took a load. He was strong. He was physical, and you know when you, when you have a player like that, it's hard to say, hey, take him off the field. And it's just tough. And it's tough because you want your best players to be your best players. But then when Freddie had the opportunity to step in and deliver the way he did in the bowl game, and we knew Freddie was good back. Don't get me. Don't get me wrong. We knew Fred was good back. Uh, but then when he stepped in and, and did what he did, was uh, was fantastic. And, and now Freddie, you know, he, he's trotting out there, you know. He's feeling good about himself and uh, looking to lead that running game again. And, you know, that's what it's all about. We've got some other good running backs behind him, you know. And that's going to be a good battle. I, I love the battle because we picked up some some good running backs there in the offseason. On the defensive side, you got some people. That, well, you bring back a lot of a great deal of, of uh, experience back on defense. We do, we do. You know, just from watching us run around today, I thought we really improved in the secondary from what we brought in. I mean, we we it's it's easy to see athletes, and when you saw us run around in the back end, I thought we had uh, we increased in size in some of the guys that we brought in. We increased in speed, uh, and I think we increased in a little bit of intelligence. And I don't mean that from a – what I mean, the, the knowledge of the game. They, they play fast. They, 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 they really are um, steadfast when you're talking to them. They, they just they want to learn, they want to know, and they, they ask the house and the whys. And yeah, I said something out there on the practice field after we got finished with the team segment. I said, wow, we just look different. You know, and it's just – I was really just commenting on two players that had stepped in there and we just look different. And that's, that's a – that's a great sign. You take a guy like IG, <clears throat> Isaiah Guy, that uh, had a chance to step in there on some, some roles last year when some guys got hurt. And um, ultimately, I, he was probably the best player we had, you know. And now it's his time to shine. He's out there again. Like I said, size, uh, another, another year on his belt. Uh, so that's exciting to see. But a lot of those guys return everywhere else. Um, linebacker led by Justin Abraham may be – I expect Justin Abraham to be one of the best linebackers in our league. And uh, he's doing a great job in leading our football team. And uh, he's going to be one to watch. I was going to ask about the, the running back situation with Freddie and the two new guys coming in. Is it going to look more like it did two years ago where it was kind of like two guys that split the time? Or if one of these guys comes up and does the job, are you going to ride him like you did in Hood? You know, that's just – it all depends. You, you have to look at the running backs and look at the running back styles. You know, if you have a running back that's – two running backs that's real similar to one another, you say, you know, what's the point? You know, if they're both pretty equal right there, and you go with the better guy, it's going to be a little bit better if he's the same type of runner. Now, if you've got a scat back, and you're going to have a little bit of, hey, let's get him in here on certain plays and see what he can do. Uh, that will all unfold here during the course of the spring. We're going to find out what each, each and every one of them have, and we'll make our – you know, our opinions and formulate our plans after spring practice and throughout the summer. 
and it'll start falling into place. And I just told him, I said, a lot of this stuff, you know, out there on the playing field is, is certainly, it, it is the most important thing. <clears throat> but I said, listen, you, you got to carry yourself well off the field. You've got to do well in that weight room. Your classroom has got to be, you know, on point. Your study hall. Everything that you do in your life is really going to dictate everything that you do out there on the field. And some of them take that to heart. Some of them don't. Um, but if they want to play here and play at a high level and play a lot of reps, then uh, they better live it. When it comes time to naming a starter at quarterback, what qualities will you be looking for? Leadership is one. You've you got to start with a great leader. I think the quarterback is, is a guy that people want to play for. They, they, they feel really comfortable when they walk out on the field. Like, I can, I can put this team on my back and, and we can go win it. And we're all looking for that in a quarterback. We're all looking for the great leader. And then I think you're looking for a playmaker, somebody that understands the concepts of what we're trying to do, can put us in the best position to, to be successful, and ultimately doesn't make the critical mistakes. Learns how to kind of, you know, take its losses when it, when it has to. And, it, and I use that term playmaker, and you don't think taking a loss is, is making a play. Sometimes taking a loss and – Instead of turning that ball over, is making a play. And I think that's what we need in the back end. But I, I, I love the quarterback to be somebody that I love to coach, that I love to be around, that I can't get enough of because I, they've got to be the heartbeat of the football team. Any else for Coach? Coach, what do you like about the two main guys, the two major candidates for the quarterback job? Well, who said they were the major candidates? You're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you putting words in my I mouth? Think Sam told me that. Sam did. Oh no, no, hey. Uh, honestly, uh, we we have a very solid quarterback room. I mean, every one of those guys <clears throat> in there have a unique ability, and and they're all different than others. And you know, just like Zach, for instance, I'm just learning who Zach is. I still got to know how he gets frustrated on this practice field, and you know, is he gonna? bitch and gripe and complain when we go three and out and runs over and blames the receiver or what he's going to do. Uh, I got to see Braylon when it counts, like in these, these scrimmage situations. When he's going with the first team, I got to see him. Uh, God, we got, we got to walk on Seth out there. Seth makes plays, you know. I got to see him in that ability. Uh, there's a lot of things we, we, we've got to see from these guys. I, and when we're a long way from knowing who's going to be our starting quarterback. This is a process that we're going to go through. Um, right up through the summer. They give us all these practice opportunities. We're going to take every single last one of them. We're going to push them through August. And then ultimately, uh, I think our team will ultimately tell me who our starting quarterback is because I'm going to see how they respond when that guy's out there on the field. You'll see them step up. You'll see them. Uh, the energy level will rise. And, and the team pretty much tells you who the guy is. So before we get out of here for sports tonight, uh, this is usually a fun, lighthearted, opinionated program, but the reality is sometimes in life those aren't the situations. Our thoughts and prayers are with Kansas City tonight as when they were celebrating their Super Bowl parade tonight, one person was killed and as of right now, 22 wounded by shots fired. Three people have been detained and are under investigating, according to the Kansas City Police Chief Stacy Graves. It was estimated that about one million people were around for this parade. So uh, definitely heartbreaking news. A day that should be about celebrating uh, turns into a horrible event. Uh, for the latest on it as well, continue to watch Atlanta News First and all our streaming platforms. We'll keep you updated as this progresses throughout the night. But that will do it for this edition of Sports Tonight. Make sure to join us for the rest of the week.